What's up guys and welcome to the weekly Q&A. Today's video is going to be a little bit longer because I actually had a lot of great patron questions come in surrounding the solo teasers. So our first one is coming from Steve Bostwick who asks if we might see Boba Fett in Solo A Star Wars Story. Maybe he'll get something like Vader did in Rogue One, a little cameo, a couple brief scenes. Yeah, I think that's a very real possibility, and something like that I, I would be totally down to see. But like Vader in Rogue One, I hope he isn't overused. I wouldn't mind seeing a flash of him here and there, uh, and maybe one big moment, but I don't want him to be a focus on the story. That said, I do have some very wild speculation that's completely out of left field. I don't normally do this, but it's kind of fun, so my random idea that I had watching the teasers is what if that guy or person in the armor that we see that's like kind of futuristic but kind of primitive, what if that is Boba Fett? Basically, what I'm suggesting is that we could see Boba Fett the entire movie, and he and Han would be at odds the whole time, and we would just have no idea until, like, the very end when he puts on his Mandalorian armor. And I guess the idea would be that he either doesn't have the armor yet, or he is wearing some sort of disguise for some reason. And this different set of armor isn't that far off from stuff we've seen Boba Fett wear in The Clone Wars. I don't think that's going to happen, and I actually think that it would be kind of at odds at things that were planned for the Clone Wars, because there were some unaired episodes where Boba Fett already had his armor, so it would have to be some sort of disguise. And again, I want to stress that this is just like a random thought that I had watching the teasers, where I was like, huh, wouldn't that be interesting? Because like I said, I don't want Boba Fett to be a focus of this movie, but it would be interesting if he were and we just didn't know it. Steven Gonzalez wants to know how the Millennium Falcon can look brand new if we already saw it in Revenge of the Sith. There is a YT-1300 that you can see in Episode 3, and George Lucas said that that is, yes, supposed to be the Millennium Falcon, a little very short cameo. So I think we have two possibilities here. The first is that Lucasfilm just says, never mind, that YT-1300 in Revenge of the Sith was not the Falcon. It was just like a one to two second cameo. And most people don't even know it's there. It's so small. So I would be perfectly fine if they retconned that. But the other option is that, yes, that was the Falcon. And then Lando came into possession of it. And he cleaned it up. He modified it. He added the front piece. And that was that. I mean, basically we have to just wait and see what the movie tells us because, I mean, Ron Howard is basically teased that it's going to be addressed. So I think there will be an answer there. But even without seeing the movie, I can already think of justifications for why the Falcon's appearance is different. Lord of the Betrayed asks if the tentacled creatures that we see in the teaser might be hinting at the return of Abeloth. And at Ozzy Guy on Twitter asked me something very similar. My short answer to that is no. I don't think Abeloth is coming back to canon. I don't think she ever will be canon in the future. But Pablo Hidalgo has a history of referencing these Legends connections in fun ways. For example, in the Rogue One visual guide, he talks about how the Death Troopers were named after this mysterious Imperial project that was surrounding reviving dead tissue. I mean, he's obviously talking about the Legends book, Death Troopers. Now, that doesn't make the book canon. It doesn't make the events of the book canon. It's just a fun little nod. And I think it would be very cool if he talked about how in Kessel in the Maw, or whatever the Kessel run becomes, obviously there are these crazy creatures in there, and he could say something about how most pilots that venture in there never come back out, and the ones that do tell legends of this immensely powerful being, and he can basically allude to Abeloth without actually bringing her back. I think that would be a perfect way to do that. David Harper Jr. wants to know if I think the Empire or the Criminal Underworld will be the main antagonist of this film. I think it's going to be the Criminal Underworld. I think the Empire might actually take a big back seat. And what I'm going to guess is that the film is going to open with Han pulling some con job at the Empire's expense. And those are the shots that we saw in the teaser. 
When I did my teaser breakdowns initially, I was guessing that we were seeing Han joining the Empire. And I do think that he did have a past, that he was in the Flight Academy and he got kicked out. But what we see in the teaser and what I think is going to happen in the movie is that we're going to open up with this big action set piece where Han and Kira pull a job together and then they have to escape the Empire. Kind of like in Indiana Jones movies, they always start with the end of the previous adventure, and it's not really related to the rest of the movie. Um, I think we're going to do something like that. So we have this big imperial set piece so that the more casual audience is like, okay, the Empire, I know these guys. This is firmly established in the Star Wars universe, and the rest of the movie is going to move on into more unfamiliar territory. I think that would be the perfect way to start this off. Michael Denton asks what the consequences of being kicked out of the Imperial Academy are. Like I said, I do think that Han probably did have a past in the Empire and that he was kicked out because he says that even if I think that those shots might not be him actually joining up in that moment. So what were the consequences? Did they force him into a life of crime? Well, in Star Wars Legends, pretty much, yeah, he was kicked out of the Imperial Academy or Imperial Service and he was blacklisted from working pretty much anywhere legitimate. The Empire just said, do not hire this guy. And so he was, he did try to find, like, honest work after he left the Empire, and he couldn't. So he kind of was forced into a life of crime. So yeah, we might see something very similar in the movie. Sam Cantor wants to know what books he should read before seeing Solo, A Star Wars Story. As it happens, I am working on a series that's going to be about exactly that. It's not going to start until late March or April, but basically I am reading through all of the Han Solo origin stories from Star Wars Legends. Since it doesn't look like we're getting a journey to Solo, a Star Wars story line of books or comics like we got for The Last Jedi or The Force Awakens, I'm going to do it for myself. So if you want to get a jump start on this, I am reading the Han Solo Adventures by Brian Daly, the Han Solo Trilogy by A.C. Crispin, the Lando Calrissian Adventures, and the book, the Millennium Falcon book. So you can feel free to read those. Basically what I'm going to do is cover one of those books every week as we lead up to Solo, a Star Wars story, and we'll review the book and we'll talk about if anything in these legend stories might be relevant in the film. Ethan asks, in new Star Wars media after Solo is released, if Han Solo is ever going to be visually shown like in a comic or a video game or a book cover, whose image are they going to use, Harrison Ford's or Alden Ehrenreich's? I think that's an interesting question I hadn't thought about, but I think it'll be a case-by-case -case basis depending on the era. If it's A New Hope or After, they'll use Harrison Ford. If it's around the time of Solo A Star Wars Story or before, they'll probably use Alden's face. That's it for patron questions. If you're a patron and you didn't see your question answered here, just head over to Patreon where I left you a written response. If you're not a patron, you can learn more by following the link in the description. Just a dollar a month gets you access to extra Star Wars Explained goodies like audio commentaries for the films or roles in my Discord server, and the combined donations really go a long way in supporting the channel. On to YouTube questions, I wanted to start by addressing something I said last week that a few people took issue with, and I was talking about how the community here, you guys, I, I found you to be more mature than some of the other Star Wars channels that I've seen. And the problem is when I was talking about that, I was talking about people liking or disliking The Last Jedi. And after listening to what I said, it totally sounded like I was saying, if you liked The Last Jedi, you were mature. If you didn't like it, you were immature. That is absolutely not what I meant, and I wanted to make that clear. I was referring to hateful and immature comments. It was either people that disliked The Last Jedi attacking people that did, or vice versa. I have seen plenty of immature comments coming from people that loved The Last Jedi, telling the people that didn't like The Last Jedi that they're not true fans. The thing is, I really do not like gatekeeping. I think that everyone should be allowed to like what they like, and they shouldn't be attacked for it. There are so many Star Wars stories, and there's only going to be more. Some of them we're going to like, and some of them we're going to dislike, and we're all going to have different opinions about that. So if every time a new movie comes out, the people that like it attack the people that didn't, and vice versa, we're going to have a bad time. So just everyone feel free to respectfully discuss your opinions. 
but let people like what they like. And that's what I meant when I was talking about maturity. I was talking about the comments that I see, and I haven't really seen as many hateful and mean-spirited comments that you guys direct towards each other. They are there, but it's just not as many as other channels. So I just wanted to clear that up because I didn't want anyone to think that I think you are immature if you didn't like The Last Jedi. That's not true at all. Aiden Brogan wants to know why snow troopers were deployed to Crate even though it wasn't a snowy planet. Great question, and one that's answered in the Visual Dictionary. The sun was glaring off of the salt flats, which is exactly what happens on a snow field as well, and the thin visors of the snow troopers helped improve visibility for the soldiers. So that's why they were deployed, and since they didn't need their internal heaters, they just turned those off. Oliver Piatilla asks why Maul didn't just kill Pre Vizsla with the Force in the Clone Wars. Well, Maul didn't just want to kill Pre Vizsla, he wanted Vizsla's people to follow him. And Mandalorians, especially Death Watch, respect strength, and they respect warriors. And yes, strength in the Force is something, but it's not something that the Mandalorians understand as much. Basically, Maul had to beat and kill Pre Vizsla in one-on-one -on -one combat, so that his people would then respect him and want to follow him into battle. Harvey Dent Two-Face asks why there are Phase 1 clone troopers on the cover of the upcoming Thrawn comic, and yet inside, in the sneak peek, they're Phase 2 clone troopers. And honestly, I think they should all be stormtroopers. I mean, the book says that they're stormtroopers, and it takes place eight years after the events of Revenge of the Sith, so by that time I think they should be stormtroopers. I don't know why they went with clone troopers for the comic, but the answer to your question, in my mind, is that the comic covers are usually more open to interpretation. The events depicted on the covers don't always happen in the comics themselves, so I think it was just an artist deciding, I think the Phase 1 looks cooler in this situation, so he went with that, and I don't know, I just wouldn't take comic covers too seriously, it's more about just creating cool and interesting looking art. Daniel Sternberg asks if I think Maz Kanata will show up in Solo, A Star Wars Story. I don't really think so, and honestly, I really hope she doesn't. I want this story to be all about Han. It doesn't really need to have ties to the sequel trilogy, or the prequel trilogy, or the original trilogy, more than having Lando and Chewie and the Falcon and potentially Boba Fett. And even though I have that wacky, wild idea about Boba Fett, I would be perfectly fine if he weren't in the movie as well. I would much rather this movie be about introducing more things with a few, like, younger, familiar elements. I want to see more new stuff, not the same stuff, but younger, you know? That's all the time I have for questions today. If you want to leave a question for next week's video, just put it in the comments below, or we're starting to look at Facebook and Instagram a little more closely, or sign up for Patreon to join our weekly Q&A discussion. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.